And oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Um, so yesterday, me and my friend, who I'll explain more about that uh, in a second, we were talking about uh, sin and not sin in an abstract sense, but how like as Christians, obviously we're supposed to fight sin. We're supposed to defeat sin. We're supposed to overcome sin. We are commanded to uh, not give in to the flesh, but to walk by the spirit. Like all of these imperatives in scripture speak to the fact that we are supposed to be holy, right? Now, one of the places that we're supposed to learn about this or learn about how to fight sin is scripture. But one of the special, important places that we learn most about it usually is church. And I was saying how I feel like churches, just not all churches, but a lot of churches just do a bad job at communicating how to be a disciple, period. Um, they give you works. They give you all these worldly, really, methods about how to fight sin instead of teaching you primarily about God, about Jesus, about the spirit and how the triune God came together in the gospel to ensure that we would have power to obey God. Um, I know from personal experience, I remember when I was growing up in the church and, you know, dealing with lesbianism, dealing with all my secret stuff. And they telling me, you know, you, you just got to stop listening to secular music. It's like true, but I can stop listening to secular music. It may help a bit, but I still have no power. Oh, you, you struggle with homosexuality. You just got to start dressing like a girl. Okay. I can put on a dress, albeit it'll be very uncomfortable, but I still have no power. <laughs> Oh, uh, you, you struggling with lust? You need to get married. Okay, I can get married. That's pretty expensive. But apart from the Holy Ghost, I still have no power. And so that that's part of, I still got tape up here. But that's part of the issue is that we giving people all these worldly methods for how to fight sin instead of giving them what the scriptures has given us, which is Jesus. And so... The person that I wanted to have this conversation with or plan to have the conversation with somebody very important and special to me. If you read my book, uh, Gay Girl, Good God, I have an entire chapter about when I was discipled and how uh, my discipleship was mad intense. <laughs> like, yeah, the woman that discipled me, she she didn't play no games. Uh, and one of the stories I gave was how uh, I, I moved to L.A. to go to this church and I lived with her. And while living with her, um, she, what happened? One morning I woke up and my plan was to get on Facebook. And this was back when uh, desktop computers were a thing. And so I got on Facebook. No, I got on the desktop and she had a post-it note that said, before you get on this computer, I need you to read this chapter of John or something like that. And I'm like, whoa, first of all. How you know my schedule? <laughs> Second of all, I don't want to read John first thing in the morning. I want to scroll on social media. But that was my life while I was with her is that she was always challenging me to seek God, love God, search the scriptures, that there was no excuse out of obedience. Um, and then whatever I would read, she would come home and she would talk me through it, but also watch me to make sure that I applied it. And so that's who uh, will be a part of this live today is my friend, uh, my mentor, the woman that discipled me, the woman who took me through some years of grief because she was helping me realize that sin is not better than God. And so hopefully she done learn how to request this thing because I, I sent her a little video. OK, saying if you on here, you, you got to request this because you, you still ain't did it. So yeah, let's see if she, <laughs> oh, she did it. Good job, Sandy. <laughs> Good job. You're you know, I, was, I think I was more nervous about that than anything. I was really scared. I, I thought you probably uh, wouldn't though. No, you taught me well though. I, I try. I sent her a YouTube link about how to join <laughs> lives before she we did this. Me on all things media, uh, social media, y'all, because I'm terrible at it. So, if something the happen, little, blame me, huh? You got the little backdrop with the blinds or whatnot. 
girl, this isn't uh, if I showed you the rest of it, it's slightly bootleg, so we will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just told people about you. You want to give a little something about yourself? I don't know. Um. Hmm. Well, first, it was so cute. I saw somebody, as you were describing, somebody wrote, Sanatoria. <laughs> Sanatoria. Sanitizer. Right. I thought about how you said people always be like, how is Santoria? Um, you know, low-key, I talked to somebody yesterday on customer service, and they had your name. Like Santoria? You know, that don't happen. Her name was Santoria. Yeah. It, was, it was strange. You should have got her information. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure if you Google it, it ain't many of y'all. <laughs> So um, anyway, uh, like Jackie said, we met at, at ministry. We both attended. I was actually the women's minister there um, for many years. And I think Jackie actually found us online, called the pastor, connected with him. He connected her with me. We kind of jailed from there. And she ended up living with me for two years. <laughs> and I discipled her. That's the short of it. Um, and it was it was really a blessing. It was really God ordained, God inspired, God led. Because every way, and maybe at some point we can go through like the whole story, all the details on both sides. Like her mom had her best friend interview me before she let Jackie come there with me. So it's really funny. Mm -hmm. um, we can go through that at some point, but it was really just the Lord because I was not classically trained as a minister at all. I just knew Jesus. I loved Him. And by the grace of God, I was gifted to teach other people how to walk this thing out. Um, and so, yeah, I think what happened with Jackie and I clearly was divine. We both, I don't think either one of us had any idea that this would happen. Um, no. And it's crazy that she wanted to do this live because really the conversation we were having, we have those conversations all the time. All the time. Yeah. And it'll go, it could go from, girl, what if you're, y'all know Jackie's silly. What if you had your toe on your hand? And I, <laughs> like, oh, think about it. Because you she really tries to get you in that. And then it'll be like Jesus on the throne. Can you imagine standing before him? And like, can we like really see his face? Or is the glow so bad? So we, mm -hmm. we have this huge range of conversations all the time. Um, and so the other day, it was on, like she said. Um, we called it, titled it. That. the miseducation of the church is is at the top which is mad creative mm. you know uh yeah. but but i i think what you said was important because you said that what if what people are learning is how to fight religion not sin it's yeah. found on that you know because i feel like um a lot of what we see um, not all of it, but a lot of what we see in Christianity is extremely transactional nowadays. Mm -hmm. so it's like, okay, I read my word this morning. Check. I prayed for 10 minutes. Check. You know, I was kind to someone. Check. Um, mm -hmm. But really, we, we serve this living Savior who actually wants a relationship with us. And so mm -hmm. I, that was what um, really pushed me when in the discipleship with you to, I knew you were smart. So I knew intellectually you were always going to be able to understand conceptually what I said. Like, mm -hmm. discipling you, I loved having conversations with you because your mind, like Eden, <laughs> your mind was just like, click, click, you were with me all the time. Right. And I, I see you get it, but let me watch your life and see if you get it. And um, and that's why the Bible says that you know a tree by its fruit, you know? Right. We, we exalt people and we credit people for having these, you know, amazing walks with the Lord because they speak well. But when we look at their life, we don't see any fruit. So it's like, oh, wow. So you're hearing, you know, the Bible talks about being ever learning and never coming into the knowledge of the truth. I remember when I read that scripture, it scared me. I was like, listen, I know I'm smart, Lord, because you made me that way. <laughs> but right. I don't know a person that can speak about your word, but have no real relationship with you. Like yeah. that, no. I, I just, and I didn't want that, obviously, for anyone I invested in either. So as it relates to, I feel like we are not only are we fighting the wrong battle. It's like sometimes we don't even know, like mm -hmm. things. Like you know how um, the Bible when it talks about the parable of the sower, they talk about like you know one person received the word with joy and ran off, but then the seed the seed still got snatched because the cares yeah. of the soaked it out. And so I think what we talked about a little bit earlier was just 
as Christians, being intentional about making sure that what we learn, we actually apply. And mm -hmm. maybe part of the miss with some Christians is that they're not even being taught the, ne the necessity of application. Um, and so I want to read some real quick because I did this devotion. Please. Um, on G it's in this book called Jesus is Calling. It's so bomb, y'all. Um, and she says, during times of severe testing, even the best theology can fail you if it isn't accompanied by experiential knowledge of me, God. The ultimate protection against sinking during life storms is devoting time to develop your friendship with me. Mm. And that's it. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, like she said, you can have the best theology you can have the best books. And, that, and that's why I think you and I are such a huge testimony because literally I didn't go to seminary school. You know, right. I, I hadn't been trained under, you know, all of these people that people esteem. I literally, I loved reading God's word. I loved the Lord himself. And mm -hmm. I want, and at the time my old pastor saw, he's like, I want you to teach people to, to, invest in the Lord the way that you do. That was really kind of how he, and I was like, all right, I can do that. You know, I didn't know if it would yeah. work. I'll try it. Um, but yeah, even, and even if you were not Jackie Hill Perry, she shows me regularly that she got it. And I'm always yeah. I'm proud of her. There's little things she'll say and I'll be like, she was listening. Like I'll literally have a moment where I'm I, I didn't really have a choice, man. Huh? You didn't really have a choice. <laughs> no, and you serve the Lord or else. <laughs> yeah, really. But one, one thing that I think, um, one thing that I think that came to my mind when you said that is that in cer certain church cultures or structures, there's a lacking to see the beauty and the simplicity of those kinds of disciplines, right? right. And so we think, you know, I need to go to a revival. I need yes. to speak in tongues for 16 hours. Yes. When I pray, I have to pray yes. for a really long time. Like yes. we, we want these big evidences of power and yes. miracles. And so we get bored with the simple stuff, yes. which is yes. RS Psalms one verse two. Yeah. I just sat with verse two for 30 yes. minutes. Yes. You, you know, it's, yes. it's, 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 I wonder like how that impacts people's fruitfulness. We don't, we don't realize it's the small stuff that bears big fruit. Like, because it, it because it's really like the equivalent of, you know, my mom, right? She I know she loves me a lot. And there's days where I don't necessarily feel she loves me, but it still doesn't make it untrue. Yeah. And so learn to kind of, Christianity can also be this really emotional thing, which I think can be terrible if we focus on that. Because there will be mm. times don't feel like God is with you, but he's still God. And it's mm -hmm. still yes and amen. He's still going to be with you. He says, Lord, I'll be with you always, even till the ends of the earth. Like that's still, mm -hmm. and I think that what you said, like recognizing that all of it, the whole of it is what makes the relationship with Jesus Christ, not just yeah. these experiences. And when you yeah. can, you can rest in the fact that the whole of it is what makes it like, bomb and good yeah. sweet um then i think you'll find that peace yeah that rest because you're not just because what because what happens with all the big things you you find yourself just running to those yeah so you to all these emotional experiences you're running from revival to revival but like you said you're never sitting with what you just learned at the revival you just left because the feeling i think is more enticing than the god the feeling is supposed to attract you to Oh, it's like, yeah. oh, you just you just want to get high. You just yeah. want serotonin. Uh, yeah, that's what it. This ain't really about God. It's yeah. about you feeling good for a moment. It's a, it's a it's a it's a, a Christian kind of drug. That's thing. right. And that's that does not sustain you through trials. Mm -hmm. Period. Because ain't no ain't no good feelings in trials. You sad. You hurt. You mad. You angry. You feel like God done left you and forsake, forsake, forsaken you. And because that's you never took a hold of the person of God, but only the feelings that were produced by. Uh, being in the presence of God, you don't know what to do with yourself. That's so you true. leave. And you cheapen the experience, you know? Yeah. It's like, you know, knowing, I remember I was really good friends with um, this really prominent person. And I knew someone else that knew that I knew the person and wanted to get next to them. 
And they were like saying, just, you know, introduce us. But it was like really shady how they were trying to do it. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, no, I'm not making our relationship into that. Yeah. Like, if you happen to be with me and we kick it, that's separate. But yeah. I'm setting up something because I because there's value for me in this relationship I have with this person. And so I think the same with the Lord. Like, if there's value, you just honor to please him. And whether mm -hmm. it's something where he allows you to go on a stage and declare his goodness, or if he has you to pray with a woman in a corner that just looks like she's having a rough day. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so to the title, Miseducation, I just think that the church needs to be, and, and not all of it, but in line with the conversation we were having, people need to be redirected to the simplicity of it. They need to be redirected to, man, I'm here to serve the Lord. And I'm yeah. here to serve with my whole heart. And really, that's it, y'all. And everything else is icing on the cake, right? If we get to share the word with someone, if we get to just do anything outside of just be in service to the Lord on a daily yeah. basis, that's, that's, that's cool. But that is not what died. Like he was. Why do, you, Go ahead. why do you think that's not enough? Like what, what, what is that thing that makes just serving the Lord mm. not enough? Our pride, I think, is a big part of it. Because there's this natural, you know, we see it back in the garden when Adam and Eve fell because they wanted to know something. Yeah. You know? They could compete. Their pride, they was like, hey, they was feeling themselves. God had been so good, so faithful, giving them so much that they believed the hype, essentially, and mm -hmm. wanted more of it. And so I think a lot of times that that's, that's what happens. Like, there's just this, with the result of the fall, all of us now are stained with this desire, this lust for mm -hmm. more and more and more and more, more accolades, you know, more pats on the back, more attention, more money, more power, like, and, and it feels good to our flesh. Yeah. Period. You know, the, we know that serving the Lord and submitting to his will is unnatural for us. Yeah. He has to give us his spirit to, des to, to like desire those things and move yeah. after. Them. And so, if you also, if you're not spending time feeding your spirit so that you desire things that are spiritual, yeah, that's another thing. You could spend six hours in church on Sunday, but if, you know, Monday through Saturday, you just eating everything the world has to offer, you, you're true. not building what you learned on Sunday, you know? So I think yeah. a big part of it is pride and just that, like that sin nature in general. And it was mm -hmm. officially activated when our parents... Our our <laughs> four four parents yeah. out of it did what they did. It just opened us up to everything, and now the fight is on. Um, hmm. so, uh, one yeah. one story that reminds me of what we're saying is I was reading in Exodus when God uh, was about to give his when God gave his commands verbally to Israel first. And mm -hmm. how, you know, he had them consecrate themselves. He, he like, hey, I'm going to show up on scene. I need y'all to be holy. But if you touch mm -hmm. this mountain, you're dropping dead. Even if the mm -hmm. animals touch this mountain, you're dropping dead. Right. How you have Israel underneath Sinai. And it's about 2 million people, right, mm -hmm. um, that have left Egypt and entered into the desert. And they say that there's a trumpet blast, but there's no one playing the trumpet. It's literally a, a trumpet blast from heaven, which is mm -hmm. scary as a mug. When you mm. consider that, that 2 million people hear music that no one is playing. Yeah. And then they say that the God descended on the mountain in fire and then the mountain shook and it became like a kiln. And then God himself started to speak to the people. That is terrifying. But <laughs> what happens immediately after Moses goes up to the mountain to speak with God himself for 40 days and 40 nights and the mm. people get irritated and get mm -hmm. impatient, and they don't know where Moses is, and what do they do? They create a calf made of gold, and they call it God. How in the world do you have this super personal, transcendent experience with God, yet when things got a smidge hard, you don't even trust them anymore? And I feel like that's us all the time, is that we have these moments that don't sustain. Ooh, and, that's a word, though. Like, 
because the reality is that shows us how vigilant we have to be y'all about guarding this gift of salvation that we've been given mm. period like because that man you just painted that picture beautifully like to have that level of an experience and then turn right around and still be like <laughs> That's a word to somebody. Somebody out there felt <laughs> sickening or know that that's them. I'm serious. It, it, because you've got to, you got, we have to remember that we're in a war, you guys. We are literally in a war for our, our souls every day. Satan is trying to steal, kill, the Bible says, and destroy. So we got to know that. As soon as we receive a revelation from God, as soon as we accept his power and authority over our lives, it's on from the mm -hmm. enemy until we die. Mm -hmm. And I think that picture you painted is just perfect, man, because it's like, it's even an encouragement for me, like saying, you got to hold on to this thing with all you got. And not that I'm not, but I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna rip even tighter because yeah. it's true. It's true. We will have had so many wonderful experiences with the Lord. It's, it's been good. The Lord's been challenging me lately. I'm in a very interesting season right now and um, with always being grateful and, and mm. he's really been challenging me with being grateful for the manna to mm. not, like the children of Israel that were receiving literally food from the hand of God every day. Yeah. You complaining about it because you're sick <laughs> of eating it. Well, you know, I've been doing this health thing. So I'm yeah. like, I don't want to eat no more. Of this but thing. they complaining so much that they said we want to go back to Egypt because it's they had more food there. But it's you, like, but you were slaves. But you jump over, you're getting food from the hand of God. Like God himself is like, doo -doo -doo -doo. like man is not growing somewhere. Nobody else is getting manna, y'all. That's true. I'm God giving it to you every day. You need every time it come down, that's a miracle happening. And you don't see that? The, we are so crazy. I, I think about it. I'm like, why did you save us? I'm so glad you did. But whoa, I'd have been like, I'm good. Good luck. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's real. No way. It's that's man. You about to jack me up and make me take this a whole other direction because it's just. Sure it. It, I, my hope and my prayer for people watching this live because for real, for real, this is literally how we talk all the time. Um, but it's that you realize that this ain't no joke, <laughs> and God is good, and He's so worthy of the fight, you guys. Like, I don't care how intense it gets. I don't care how overwhelming, how stressful, how bad, how ugly. Like, on your worst day here, he is worth it, you know? I, and I often think about because I get the forever with him. Yeah. Ever many years I get here, you know, I ask for 100. But however many years I get here, I get eternity with God where all of this mess I had to battle through, I will no longer have to battle. Mm -hmm. That's worth it to me, you know? And so, and I thank the Lord because he has really restored the joy of my salvation. Like shortly after I finished discipling Jackie, a whole bunch of stuff popped off. And I was like, I went into hiding for a minute. I was like, I'll be back. I was like, Jackie, go with God. I know you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. I literally, she would call me for advice. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I know that you trust the Lord. I, tr I trust that you trust the Lord. Pray and he'll tell you what to do. I ain't got nothing for you because I was mad. So I needed to get that. Um, but God was so faithful. And so he's worth it, y'all. He will. You will not stand before the Lord on the day of judgment where he gets to say, well done and regret every fight. Come on. There's no way it'll happen. And I'm convinced of that. But I'm convinced of that because I've sat, I've meditated on his word day and night. I've done it. Even when I didn't feel like it, even when it didn't feel good or feel like anything was happening. I'm like, you still got, yeah. and you're a liar. All this stuff I've read is true. So yeah. that's what it is, that's my emotions. Have, have you had experiences with, uh, and I know you have, I'm asking <laughs> for the people, but have you had experiences in church where, where God was not presented or, or not presented as being as valuable as he is, which in turn actually made your walk harder. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. <laughs> For example, <laughs> okay. um, I think a big one 
is the fact that I'm single. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've never been married, don't have any kids. I'm 40 plus. Um, and I'm okay with that because I'm like, listen, I want to partner with the one that is the partner for me. I, mm -hmm. you know, if I wanted to be married, I could just be married, but no, I didn't want that. Um, and I think, and I think you and Preston did talk about this, uh, the idolatry of marriage. Yeah. I think sometimes the way that marriage is taught or even the way that singleness is treated, it's like it's some disease that people are plagued with. And I'm like, yo, if I'm mm. committed, committed to the Lord, I'm living for Jesus. I'm, you know, I'm honoring him with my life. I'm because I'm single, I was able to fly out and help you with your newborn baby. And I'm able to, <laughs> you know, go and do things for my mom and my grandmother that I, like, I just have all this time to, and I can serve. That's not a bad thing, but you'll, you'll be in this place where you're like, man, God, I think I'm honoring you, but based on what they're saying, like, I need to be praying for a husband. I need to write it down and put it in a book and sit it in a corner. I need to, <laughs> so, so again, that's where your focus gets redirected and you're just mm -hmm. like, Hmm. man and so I really had to like take a strong stance against that against that and like just kind of declare in my heart like no y'all don't make me feel shame because I'm not married that's so silly like yeah. so you would rather I have married some of these bozos that I dealt with <laughs> <laughs> and I would potentially no longer have been serving the Lord because mm -hmm. that was not their strong suit which was mm -hmm. a big part of the problem mm -hmm. then to be single and enjoying the Lord, you know, and able to invest in his people, you you would rather that. Yeah. So absolutely, I think, you know, we gotta, that is not the first thing. The, the first reason we come to salvation is for a relationship with Jesus. We gotta, and everything has to be rooted or, or stacked on that, right? Yeah. Always be first, always be first. I said I wanted to start having women's singles conferences where you don't come out with five ways to get your man or waiting on the Lord and enjoying it. No, forget that. We just don't live our Christian life. Right. Like what, like, why does it, why you gotta be hyped up for that? Cause mm -hmm. I feel okay. I now feel bad because of all the things y'all are saying, but I was mm -hmm. fine walked in here. So yeah, most definitely. And there's a mm -hmm. number. <laughs> for sure. I know for me, um, so the, the the church, when I came to Jesus, the church that I went to in the beginning, uh, which I talked about in my book, too, was a church that was very uh, gifts oriented. Right. And so, you know, if you like literally I joined, I became a Christian second week of October 2008. They probably had me preaching two weeks later <laughs> and they no, they not two, two months later. No, they, yeah, they, they waited till I could speak in tongues and <laughs> there's something I'm not going to say wrong, but unwise about that yeah. because you're taking a baby and putting her on a platform and having her speak into people's lives when she hasn't even grown the, the maturity to be able to live it and fully, not fully know what I'm talking about, but yeah. just have some experience behind me. Right. Yeah. Um, but they did it because I can speak well. I know. I know. <laughs> and so it was like it only it wasn't until I left that church where oh so there's that the, the gifts oriented thing yeah. but there's also the, the way the gospel was presented it wasn't presented I did not know that the gospel was important one yeah. I thought that the gospel was just Matthew Mark Luke and John I thought it was the title of books I did not know that it was a message that's right but I didn't know that it was a message where my fruitfulness and faithfulness to God hinged on my <laughs> resting in it and what i mean by that is like i remember when you told me um I, I was talking about fighting sin or something like that and you was like you have to remember the gospel i'm like right but like how do i fight this sin <laughs> jesus came he died he lived he rose got it but tell me how to fight this how long i need to pray uh what israel new breed album do i need to listen to uh right. do i do I need to listen to a Juanita Bynum sermon while I go to sleep? Or is there some, some candles that I should buy from QBC that I should burn? Like all these methods, right, to fighting sin. And you were like, no, when Jesus died for your sin, it not only saves you, but it keeps you. 
And so it's the message of the gospel that you remember and you apply in this moment to say yes to this sin and that sin and this sin, right? Look at you. (laughs) So I I think one of the ways in which the church miseducates people is by making the gospel, they don't make it the centerpiece of their conversation. Uh, yeah as if it's insufficient to keep us everything else will keep you you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying and it's the only thing that keeps you come on talk that it is you you got a thorough understanding of the gospel you can really you can live it out yeah period period yeah so yeah i think go no finish 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 i was just saying i'll let you talk no i just think that that's just dead <laughs> Y'all, this makes me so happy. You have no idea. Like, when she remembers everything I don't, first of all, there'll be certain stuff, especially if I was getting smart with her. She'll be like, you told me. And I'm like, oh, I did say that. Yeah, you did a lot. <laughs> Let me tell one story. I told you a story uh, the other week that you didn't remember. So I had uh, posted this. And this is what? Like 12 years ago, probably. 11 years ago. I posted this status that I thought was bomb. Like this was before <laughs> Twitter. And it was some real Christian and, and gospel-y, right? And so uh I think I told San about it. And she was like, Yeah, that's cool. But did you apply it though? And I was like, nah, I just read something in the Bible and I liked it. So I tweeted it. And she was like, You probably shouldn't get in the habit of sharing stuff that you haven't lived yet. I'm like, dang, like I just want it. Some support but, for how dope that passage was that I just interpreted on Facebook. Already, they listen, they put you up in the pulpit after two months, girl. <laughs> you already thought you was hot stuff. I did. The whole thing was to bring some balance in there and be like, nah, fucking, nah. Be- Here's it- another another time. <laughs> we was talking about poems. We were talking about poetry. And you was like, uh, I was, I don't know. And you was like, you know what's deep, Jack? And I was like, what? <laughs> Like when you get to heaven and you see all the angels that wrote your poem for you. <laughs> I'm like, so I didn't write them? <laughs> that wasn't my imagination? <laughs> it was, it was, oh God. Yeah, God helped me. Like it was just like, <laughs> you just really, you don't want me to go to hell at all, do you? <laughs> I didn't. If I'm the grace of God, you ain't. My gosh. Girl, I was, but hey, it was good. I think it was good for us both because I told her this recently. I actually really love Jackie's personality. And I'm like, we could kick it. So I had to be intentional to be like, I ain't kicking it with this girl until I know she good with the Lord. You ain't we about to be friends. So our friendship has come later. <laughs> it did. It did. <laughs> but um, yeah. Can we talk about legalism? Let's do it. How would you how would you describe legalism? Um, <laughs> like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, just following a bunch of rules, but really um, not being connected to, like missing the context of why someone would do something. Mm-hmm. So, um, gosh, for example. Like like we said at the start of the conversation, just things are a ritual. So it's not really that your heart is connected. Mm. I got it. So, you know, we say grace before we eat our food. Mm-hmm. And a lot of us are raised saying grace. You know, our parents will teach us the little prayer. God is good. God is great. And I remember there was a point where I think I'd seen a movie and they were saying grace. And the guy just really paused and was like, Lord, we give you thanks. Mm. And I was like, Wow. And it was so sincere. It was so simple. And that's all he said. And he started eating. Hmm. I was like, man, God, I feel like I go through grace now as a ritual. I'm not literally like thinking about it, like a pause, like, thank you, God, for this food. Like that, like for your provision that I have food, that I'm eating the food that I want, that I have enough of it. Like, so I think that's the difference between like legalism I, that's the problem with legalism. You're you're definitely on the outside. You look, you know, like they said, outside of the cup is clean, but the inside is dirty. You know, you look like a Christian. You're yeah. for all of the, you know, um, what would be considered the illustrations of Christianity. But yep. you know, your motivation for doing it, and that'll come out. That'll come out in your attitude. 
that'll come out in really a lack of love will mm -hmm. always expose you know if someone is really has a heart submitted to the lord or they're just because yeah. i remember with legalism in my previous ministry and i think about um how much love i lacked in talking to people it was like love me. i'm just telling them the truth you know? <laughs> just telling them the truth and it was true but it was so it was. cool yeah it's like you know the bible talks about um with loving kindness he draws you know mm -hmm. and like his grace teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions mm -hmm. like these are such gentle you know attributes and, and here I, I was just banging people over the head like listen you know turn or burn <laughs> Uh -oh. terrible and so i see the self-righteousness was the sin i was committing at the time hmm. i was right but man i like love and he said what if we like that we're like a clanging symbol yeah and so um so yeah i think legalism is just really you're doing things devoid of the spirit of god because if you're really being led by the spirit of god you're gonna you're gonna bear all his fruit love joy peace kindness gentleness you're gonna you're gonna bear all of that in how you but if you just Says on the thing, she's crying. I need to pat her back twice and then wait. A I minute. think I think what's hard is when I was in that legalistic world, is that many of us enter into it very sincerely. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like I just wanna obey God. I just yeah. wanna love God. I don't want him to be mad. And yeah. I think for me personally, there was a disconnect between obedience and a thorough understanding of God's acceptance, yeah. which is to say that it, if I am in Christ Jesus, I am fully accepted already. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not obeying to earn God's That's love. Right. That's I'm right. obeying in response to God's right. love. Uh, but I didn't know that. It just was like, I don't want, I was treating God like how you treat just really bad masters. I don't want you to be mad at me and I don't want you to kill me. Mm -hmm. So let me make sure I pray for a certain amount of time. Let me make sure I was out here. Remember I was out there one time I left your house because I was like, oh, I don't witness enough. God told me go there for make disciples of all nations. I went outside to this high school and tried to like hand out tracks to these kids because I thought that God was mad at me because I didn't witness <laughs> enough. But I thought witnessing was talking to strangers on the street like what Preston right. does. Right. I didn't realize, yes, you're called to, to give the gospel, but you don't have to give the gospel like that to be accepted by God. You can give the gospel in the way the, the, the Lord has gifted you and shaped you. You know what I'm saying? It's, a, it's just, it just was a, it's, a, it's stressful to be legalistic. I was going to say, and you're only able to discern how God has equipped you to do it as you're led by his spirit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so it's not going to look the same. That really helped me when I came out of legalism to see like, man, we're painting Christianity with this broad brush, but God is huge and he has many ways of expressing himself and he has mm -hmm. many people to do it. So I'm not going to hold you to the standard that he's called me to or mm -hmm. to the thing he's called me to Yeah, can't do that because God doesn't work that way. And this relationship is so personal. I don't know what he told you, mm -hmm. you know, um, when I left my old church, because I didn't run right into another church, everybody was like, mm, she ain't going to church. Like, what? Oh, I mean, you need don't forsake the assembling. I'm, I'm like, I'm not forsaken. I got friends that are Christians. We assemble all the time. <laughs> I'm, and I feel like the Lord taught me more kind of in this little secret place that he and I had than I could have gotten anywhere else because I needed to heal, too, from mm. the, my previous church. Yeah. So y'all have me talking about you know, she need to join a church. Oh, your kids go to church. And I know how they living outside of it. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. <laughs> Seeming these things over the Lord. Watch my life. And if the fruit that I'm bearing is not reflective of him, okay, mm -hmm. let's have a talk. But you haven't even, you literally just haven't seen me go to church. And mm -hmm. you haven't. I'm looking like, wow, how shallow. Because mm -hmm. God is everywhere. He right here with us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Listening to you try to rebuke me for not going to a church. Like, mm -hmm. but he knows I had a beautiful morning with him this morning. And yeah. I had a conversation for two hours with Jackie about the glory of God. And I, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. We gotta, it all comes back to you being educated to know the Lord for yourself. So you yeah. can live 
in a personal way and it be real and authentic. Yeah. Do not. <laughs> I think I think this goes back to the conversation of being in the scriptures. And what's hard is uh, a lot of times we read the scriptures as we're taught to, right? So it's 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 difficult to sometimes take off those lenses yeah. that our pastors have given us and how we interpret the scriptures. And so I think that's the significance of praying and yeah. saying, God, you lead me, you help me, because the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth, irregardless if you've been taught wrong or not, the Holy Spirit can start to change, um, I think, the way you see stuff. And so for me, I remember I was in your um, on your couch and I just was always afraid of going pale. Always, mm. just, just every, I just thought everything I did was deserving of hell. And it is yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm born in sin, shaped in iniquity. All my good works are as filthy rags, right? Yeah. But I'm actually covered. I'm in Christ. And so now I can please God. God can look at me and, and be yeah. pleased. But I didn't know that yet. And so I just was, I was just stressed. I just was that's a that's a stressful thing to be like, oh, I'm never going to make it in because I'm basing my salvation and my entrance into heaven by what I do yeah. versus yeah. on what Jesus Christ has done for me. Right. That's the difference. And so I was reading Jude, which is what led to me eventually writing a Bible study on it. When I had got to verse 24, I didn't understand nothing of what you said, all, all them 23 other verses. It made absolutely no sense. But when I read, to him who is able to keep you. Yeah. I was like, wait. It says to him who is able to keep you right. and to present you faultless and blameless before his presence with great joy. And yeah. it's like, whoa. When I stand before God, one, I'm going to stand faultless and blameless, even though I did all this stuff, because all of this stuff has been paid for in Christ. Mm -hmm. But it's also God who gets me there. Mm -hmm. That right there set me free. Set me free. Yes, girl. go. Go with your foot ministry. <laughs> My God. Like, uh, and I think we're afraid to say that because we think people will take advantage of grace. Because it of sounds course. like I'm giving you a free, you know. Right, 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 right. But when and, and we don't but we don't need to be the Holy Spirit for people. Mm. We gotta give them to the Lord, you know. It's just like like I said, there were times where you might have asked my advice and I just didn't have it in me to try to do anything. But I I prayed though. I said, Now look, Lord, I ain't got it, but you do. <laughs> I, still was, I was praying that he would lead you and he did you know he was so faithful and so yeah we really have to let god be god and mm -hmm. and be okay with that you know mm -hmm. and it might not look the way we think it should or any of that um but really trust his faithfulness because of who he is yeah you know so it's true and else you said earlier that i was what i say Oh, you're talking about reading the word. Oh, and they read it with the slant of their pastor. Mm -hmm. Man, and also it's one good tip, just something I felt like the Lord laid on my heart one time I was praying before I was getting in the word. And he was like, Sam, read it like you're getting to know me. Mm -hmm. Like you're getting to know someone you love and you mm -hmm. really care to know this person. And for me, that changed the whole way I read the, the Bible because I read it about someone it was it was this it was this letter to point me to someone i desperately wanted to know well come on so it just everything was sh i could just see god's hand and oh my gosh with this you're showing me your character you're showing me what you like you show me what you don't like like it was just the coolest thing um so that too if that helps anybody like read this thing don't read it like because I used to read it like this old book with these these thuses and dines. I don't know what they talking about. Like, <laughs> it's like, oh, Jesus, help me. But you did it because you knew it was good for you. Yeah. You, best, you know, but I was like, yeah, I can't be reading the Bible like that. I need to. So I just remember praying and, and him being like, yeah, just read it like you're trying to get to know me. And I was like, okay, no. I yeah. that. that was <laughs> And I have to, I have to make it clear how significant what you're saying is, because I, I think there is a, not I think, I keep saying I think, there is a huge demonic 
attack on all Christians to not enjoy the scriptures, yes. to not want to read yes. the scriptures, yes. to not yes. want to stay in the scriptures. Yes. Because demons know it's yes. power. That's right. You, when you look at uh, Luke 4, I think, when Jesus goes into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, Jesus was not having a conversation with the devil. Every single response he had was from the scriptures, from Deuteronomy to be exact. And so if Jesus, God himself, is using the scriptures to defend himself against yeah. the onslaught of the devil's schemes, yeah. what makes you think mm. that you don't need to be just as... Uh, ready to like say the scripture too and the difference is he didn't have a phone to go scroll get a text it was in his heart already okay amen and yeah. so he went into that wilderness prepared because he had already been in the word my god my god my god why have you forsaken me it's just in that scripture too that psalms <laughs> he's quoting the scriptures back to god why he being crucified yeah. but what i was gonna say was <laughs> is that uh, <laughs> um the significance of reading the scriptures like that, mm -hmm. because that's why I'm, I'm so, I try not to be uh, critical, but I am critical of like other preachers, because that's what bothers me so deeply mm -hmm. about many of the sermons that are very popular mm -hmm. is that they aren't about God. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. about every, like he's mentioned, his name is dropped in there someplace. Yeah. Yeah. But we just walk out of them feeling really great about ourselves, but right. very ignorant about the person of God. And then we wonder why we can't stop smashing. Yeah. We wonder why we can't have joy. Yeah. We wonder why when suffering comes, yeah. we need yeah. all these other things to keep us lifted up other than God. And it's because like we've just been consuming self-centeredness yeah. and not the not not Jesus. You, you know what I'm saying? And so I just I, I just ugh. I don't know what to say other than um, stay away from sermons that make you more aware of yourself than Jesus. I, I think that's problematic. <laughs> and take it further. Like the whole point of the Bible is for us to get to know Jesus. That's, that's it. it. That's it. Like if we can go in there and find him again, because you see his character, his nature, his perspective in everything, yep. even stories that ain't about Jesus, they about other people. Yeah. The way that it, it unfolds, we can see God's heart through it out through it all. And if we can really if we can really go to the word or go to church looking for him, mm -hmm. the relationship with him, I think we will be able to detect when someone is deterring us from that. Yeah. You know? Um and so and I and I think that's what you detect. It's like, if it ain't something that's going to push me to a closer relationship with the father, you just talking mm -hmm. and philosophical and, and smart, mm -hmm. but or, uh, I can't whip that out in the middle of no battle with you. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that, yeah, that keep the main thing, the main thing, y'all, everything else is secondary. Yeah. You know, but we were separated from God because of sin. He sent his son to reconcile us to him period mm -hmm. that relationship so bad he sent his son to die to make a way for it mm -hmm. so that relationship is the central most important thing ever yeah that relationship is it and so we're to guard it we're to feed it we're you know to nurture it we're to protect it we're to love it we're to sit in it i um i've been meditating on the fact that um, that scripture that talks about nothing separating us from the love of God. Mm -hmm. Lord has been like saying, nothing will separate you from my love. And then trying to really meditate on no height, no depth, no things. Mm -hmm. Like nothing mm -hmm. separate me, Santoria, from his love. Like, what does that really mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Lord, give me a revelation of that so that I can respond to you out of gratitude for loving me that much. Yeah. But that's, a, but that's like, I think those are the things in scripture that we can read over and be like, man, that sounds so cool. And it sounds really poetic. <laughs> and, and for me, I'm like, yeah, he loves us all. And he's like, no, no, I love you that way. Hmm. You know, for him to say before he formed us, he knew us 
That's each one of us individual. Yeah. Every everything in our life, he went, he crafted that thing. Like I was thinking about um, I love giving surprises. And if I'm like putting together a surprise for somebody, like there's so many details that I'm managing in order to do that. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, you did that for my life. Yeah. Or I knew you formed me and you you prede predestined me and all of these things, but you laid it. You did all of that before I was even here. Yeah. It's like that's love. That you know what I you know what I hear though when you what? talk? Not to cut you off. No, don't, don't but worry. But what what I hear is when you read the Bible, you believe it's true. A hundred percent. Because that's that's I wonder if like sometimes when we read it, we really do think it's hypothetical. Yes. I or do. abstract. Yes. Yes. It's like, no, I, I do love you. Yeah. That's the thing. Yes. And that's yeah. what you're going to that word to look for. Yeah. <laughs> to make it per you know what I'm saying? So that yeah. it's not hypothetical. So that it's not far reaching. Mm-hmm. It really is like the Lord died to give us himself now. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. His spirit lives in us now. He's leading us into all truth. Now. That, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, believe it. And if he's all powerful, he can do exactly that. Yeah. And so, yes, that's true. That's That's my hope. Yeah, because that, that's a, uh, I, I feel like, man, I, I, I often think to myself, bro, if I really believed everything in this thing, my life would be, it is different, but how much more different would it be? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Like to him who was able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I could ever ask or think according to the power that worked in me. And if he's already, I believed that. He's already done that in your life, right? Slash doing it. Right. So that he could keep doing it. If you actually had the audacity to believe it, girl. Castor cares because he cares for you. No, like really sit with that. Like, oh God, God cares for me. No, he God, yeah. triune, yeah. pre-existent, yeah. non-created, creator of heaven and earth, yes. uh, holy, kind, just being, timeless, omniscient, yeah. omnipotent, cares about me. <laughs> So that give no theirs. Give them your and, and here's my thing. Like when those revelations hit me, I'm like, oh, you care, huh? All right. I'm about to try it. That's <laughs> Let me give you these anxieties real quick. <laughs> this anxiety is C. You know, even I remember I always run into that scripture that says, In in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. Mm -hmm. I have quoted that to myself in times of fear so many times. And every time he shows up. Boom. I'm like, you better. So that's what convinces me. <laughs> and that's why I believe it, you know? And so that's why it's so important that we go into his word and we strive to apply it. Um, and apply it just mean, gosh, how could we even break that down? Because I feel like there's certain terms that we can take for granted. Yeah. Um, Man, I think application is believing it to the point of action. Hmm. And so the the simple one with Philippians is just like because uh, I, I, I know Philippians and let me go to Philippians and um, that other passage has these casting cares thing about it Philemon. No, nobody ever preached Philemon. You know that? Yeah, you gonna do it though, just to prove a point. I probably would. You know, <laughs> I'm such a. I that's why when I told them I'm a, I told uh, Lifeway, I was like, yeah, my, my next study will be uh, Leviticus. It's like, well, we don't have Leviticus. I was like, I know. That's why I want to do it. Because <laughs> ain't nobody did it yet. No, um, it's that time where you were like, um, don't nobody be quoting Lamentations. Remember, <laughs> they did post about it. I was like, uh-huh. They don't mess with Amos. None of them. <laughs> Obadiah. Not Nahum. It's like, y'all scared. Of anyway, uh, I can't find it. But when, okay. it comes to, when it says cast, I remember I, I studied the Greek of that. And okay. cast meant to throw, to mm -hmm. literally violently throw something at someone. Oh. And that gave a different imagery for me because it's like God literally wants me to pick up my anxieties, pick up my burdens, and yeah. throw them at his feet. Man. 
but the motivation is that he cares. And I think it's 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 significant that it didn't say that he loves. Mm. It says that he cares. And, I care about what you care about. Right. And we gotta believe he cares though. Right, because that's part of the application. <laughs> Because if I don't believe he cares, yeah. then I'm going to worry. Then yeah. I'm going to stress because I Absolutely. believe that I have to handle it on my own accord. It's like when uh, Peter and all them was in the boat and the boat was going crazy. And they're like, God, don't you care that yeah. we're about to sink? That's the yeah. same thing. And he's yeah. like, why y'all tripping? Yeah. So the yeah. application would have been, no, he does care for me. If yeah. God is in the boat with me, we're not going to die. Right. Period. That's good. And it, it reminds me of... um. One time, um, cause I, <laughs> Jackie knows for me, I'm like really open person. Like I'll be down for you. I usually get along with just about anybody, blah, blah, yeah, blah. You do. but if you burn me, <laughs> child, it's over. It's fresh. Yeah. Pray, pray all of our strength. And so, um, <laughs> I remember the Lord was showing me, I was dealing with it. And vengeance is mine. I I will repay. Mm. And I feel you, but you know, hey, thinking I'm soft. I just I, I wasn't letting it go. And mm -hmm. and so what the example the Lord gave me, and this is just to kind of paint the picture of care. Um, I grew up very in a big family. I have five uncles, very very close to my uncles. They were like surrogate fathers. Um, and the Lord said, if your uncle said, I got it. Mm. Somebody did something to you and they said, I got it. You would not worry about it again. Mm. And that jacked me up because I completely trust them to be a protector. Mm. And so I was like, he's right. And I knew then I'm not trusting you the way I would trust my uncles who are fallible and human. You know, if they do exact some vengeance, could get locked up, <laughs> could end up dead. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But the creator of all things, like, I got it. Like, mm -hmm. you don't need to worry about that. And I'm like, that's deep. Wow. And ever since then, I've been able to let go so much easier because I'm like, you got it. Side note, um, those St. Beanies were sold out. And that green one is the one I wanted. So please. <laughs> the green one. I was so sad. We'll restock this month. But I keep missing it, Jackie. That was I'll text you when we restock. If I had, or I could just ship you this one. It's been I, on my head, I, though. There? Okay. I'm just saying. But anywho. Ew. I remember when I read in, uh, I think that's Peter, where it said that when Jesus was reviled, he didn't revile in return because he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. Yeah. And that was deep to me because I'm like, oh, so Jesus ain't have a smart mouth Listen. or pop back at people because he trusted that God would take care of it. Yeah. And that's hard because I don't Ooh. like when people talk to me crazy. I don't like when people treat me wrong. I don't like none of that. But it's like even my vengeance is actually insufficient. Oh, yeah. It really isn't even perfect vengeance. No. However, it might manifest in someone else's life. You know what I'm saying? So. And when you you find, and not that you want this, but when God, when you do step back and God gets them, you really be like, okay, Lord, whoa, hey, hey. <laughs> like, he, when he gonna get them, he gonna get them. He yeah. just, um, um, so yeah, he got it, y'all. He, he really has it. But hopefully that illustration I really just wanted to make it practical because mm -hmm. that I think that has been the heart of my walk with the Lord. It's really been him breaking himself down. And look at that. Mm. He'll meet you where you at. Oh, you got a word in your spirit. It's such a good God. Like he's God. He don't have to break it down, but he does, you know, mm -hmm. like he's just good. Yeah. But literally he'll take, he always takes these concepts and as I meditate I have to spend time with him for him to do it but he'll take these concepts and break them down and put it in a context that I'm like oh okay I see what you're saying yeah and so continue the Bible says seek him and, and you'll find him y'all so for those of you even that feel that like it's hard for me to grab them it's hard for me to understand it's even hard for me to process what y'all saying Keep pursuing him because he is going to be able to honor his word. He yeah. really, he did not die for us all to not do everything he can to yeah. make sure he has us, yeah. you know?
So, yeah. yeah, I think that's why God calls us children. Children yeah. don't understand overnight. Yeah. They, they yeah. Gotta, you, as you live, as you grow, things make more sense. And sure. intimacy gets easier. I yeah. Think. And difficult, but easier. No, uh, yeah. I, I, I listened to this sermon by Tim Keller where he was talking about the difference between the mature Christian and the baby Christian is that the mature Christian doesn't depend upon feelings to know where they are with God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and he was like, he thinks that in the, you know, when, when you're a baby Christian, God kind of allows you yep. to have these experiences or have yep. this sense and experience of his love. Yep. Uh, just, but as it time grows, it's like, okay, yep. you know me now, you got yep. this word. You need to like what we said earlier, you need to know I'm with you. Right. Even when it don't feel like it. Right. <laughs> So that's where you grow up, grow up, grow up. Yeah. Like, up, you know, and, and that's when, that's what makes too, when the Lord reveals himself in the midst of your circumstance, it makes it so beautiful mm -hmm. because you'll feel like I've been walking for two months. I don't hear him. I don't see him. What is happening? But Lord, I trust you. Right. So you keep going. So when he finally unfolds, whatever it is that he's trying to get you to, it is such a beautiful and sweet moment with yeah. the Lord. And it builds your trust in him. Gosh, like, because it's like, I could not see this happening. Mm -hmm. I could coming. I didn't mm -hmm. even fully believe it. I believed mm -hmm. it enough. I had some mustard seed faith and it kept me going. But, whoa, Lord, I never knew this is what you would be doing. Um, it, is, it ends up being a beautiful thing, y'all. All right. That was fun. We I, never did this. We never have ever. <laughs> and we 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 restrained ourselves because we actually be a little bit on ten. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We did. <laughs> I feel like we cut each other off a lot, but it's just me and you. We, yeah. We, and it was like, oh, oh, oh. It's just <laughs> have all kinds of connections. We Do you have it. anything you want to say to the people before we head on out? What's your prophetic uh, self? Oh, see, Jackie. Just saying, I ain't tell no stories. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell y'all something Jackie does to me. <laughs> She'll be like, the Lord does expose things, reveal things to me from time to time. But Jackie, I feel like will set me up and say that to people in a way that I feel like will freak them out. I'm like, wait, stop the. It's like. <laughs> Uh, I love it. I know. You get a kick out of it. I do. Because I love seeing the different ways in which God uses people, especially spiritual gifts. Like even people with the gift of hospitality. That's fascinating right. to me. That God would give you a spiritual gift to be super welcoming. That's interesting. Or administrative. It's just like, you know how to do Excel sheets because the spirit of God gifted you with that. That's crazy. <laughs> so prophecy to me is just like I just love it. It's tickled, and I would just always feel like awkward. <laughs> and then people are looking at me like, <laughs> and I feel like they'll be like super guarded. Like I hope she ain't seeing nothing. I'm like oh, y'all, yeah. like I really y'all see it. everything. Y'all need y'all all right. Exactly, and yeah. I can only that by the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. I, I want to say thanks for doing this. This was really fun. Yeah. Um, she knows I was like hesitant. For a long time, I'm like, mm -mm, I'm not talking about nothing. I'm good. But yeah, I guess now was the right time. Mm -hmm. Thank you to everyone that has supported um, her, supported her and her ministry. Um, special shout out to like, just women that I know that have tried to walk alongside her and really invest from Melody. Is her last mm -hmm. name? Mm-hmm. I believe even like Christine Kane has reached out. I don't know if she'll watch it, but just thank you. Um, Crystal Evans Hurst, who I think is hilarious. She's super funny. <laughs> she made a comment once about uh, people coming for her sister and how she'll want to come back. And she's like, well, my clap back game is strong. And I felt, I felt that. I felt her on that. Mm -hmm. But just the way that women, any women, I don't want to miss any names, but Jackie and I obviously have had conversations. I just appreciate you guys supporting her and having her back and praying for her and um, helping to shine a light 
you know, on the path that the Lord is leading her on. Um, God has really, really been faithful. I would have never imagined, you know, when this girl came was sleeping on my couch <laughs> and then sleeping in the loft, um, that it would be like such this big thing. I still, I think I'm trying to wrap my mind around it because I told her up until, what was it like last year, people would roll up on you when we'd be out. It's like, oh, Jackie Hill Perry. I was like, oh, they saw your poems. Oh, I got to tell the story. I got to tell one more story. It's in line with what you're saying. Okay, so uh, when I was living with saying I was just, I was a hot mess. I, I was, I had the words, the communication gift, uh, but I did not have the life or the real wisdom because real wisdom is displayed in how you live, right? And so <clears throat> she told me, she was like, you know what? And you always pause when you finna like <laughs> slice somebody up. You say, you know what? You're on your way to being a very famous hypocrite. Oh. <laughs> and you're like, because God is going to use you. Your gifts are going to make room for you. But you're going to be lying the whole time. Ah. And I'm like, dang. <laughs> like, you just, dang. and you said it with such a straight face. <laughs> such a straight face. It just was crazy. But it was true. Yeah. It was true. Like, I would have been out here able to really communicate the things of God while have, not actually doing it. And I love that I know that at home, even though I'm sure people that don't know you personally, you just come off very <laughs> flat all the time, sarcastic. Mm -hmm. But she actually really cares, y'all. She's so intentional about what she says or what she does or how she does it. She's really very interested in honoring God and being effective for you guys. And so um, I'm so proud of that above so many other things that people might want me to be proud. I'm proud of that because I know her heart is really committed to the Lord in this thing. And that that was what I was always trying to challenge. Um, but to that end, I'm happy you gave those examples because so that as, as it's come out that I disciple Jackie, I've had a few people approach me like, oh my God, I didn't know that you disciple Jackie Hill. Um, I would love it if you would work with me. And I'm like, I almost want to be like, let me give you her number. And you <laughs> yeah, they, Cause they, they see this. Yeah. They don't see you with the sword every yeah. day talking yeah. about some repent and believe. Yeah. In the kitchen. And challenging like everything. And the thing is, you know, I want to give the credit to Jackie too. Like the Lord led me in how to invest, but she had to be led in how to respond. Mm. You know? So if you don't have a heart that's willing, because Jackie would respond well, but through tears, she would be looking at me. I could tell she was mad. I think I, I laughed the other day. I was like, one time you looked at me and I swear I was like, I hate you. <laughs> you got on my nerves. Hey, but you did it. You every you obeyed and God was so faithful to that. And so it's not, y'all, it's not some, and she lived with me two years. So yeah. it wasn't like, we had a couple weeks like it was really we did life together um so i know it was extremely intense and um just for people to keep that in perspective like when you are inviting someone to speak into your life like make sure your heart is ready for that you know um especially if i, b I believe the lord has trained me to teach and to invest in people the way i did with jackie because jackie's the one y'all know but she's not the only one right and so mm -hmm. Um, it's heavy duty. Like the Lord will give me a lot of revelation about the person and just kind of lead me on how to maneuver. Um, so it gets really invasive. And if you ain't ready for that, I promise you just, we can be cool. I will encourage you, tell you what I've been reading, but discipleship. <laughs> okay. Look, Cause I've, I've, I've consistently said on podcasts or whatever, I was like, my life is the fruit of discipleship. What mm -hmm. I say, what I, how I communicate like all of it mm. was drilled into me for those two years and yeah. i think without it i i don't I, I i think i would be i think without discipleship i just don't think i would be effective in mm. the sense of being intentional mm. yeah. and I, I think that's the difference it made so and that was the goal it's gonna make me shout just it is, but I gotta go. I gotta uh, get Preston got a Christmas present. Oh, so he told you what I got. Uh huh. He, he texted to me. 
Oh, he takes your picture? Yup. He got it from the mall. And he takes, I'm not telling you that. He texted it <laughs> or I sent pictures. What, co what color good. is it? I'm telling you, Nathan. He sent you the receipt. <laughs> Girl! <laughs> We've been trying to we've been trying to guess what each other got because we, we're oh, in a competition. We're in a competition with who. Gets I heard the there's gift. a competition. I mean, I I mean, you're an excellent gift giver. I'm so. gonna win. <laughs> That's no doubt gonna, about that. I was gonna text you to text me what you got him. You gotta text me. And I just got my royalty check. I'm gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> so, gonna throw my beanie in the mail. I will. All right. Love you, Sandy. All right. I love you too. Thanks, right. everybody.